Hi, I'm Buzzin1, and today I'm going to talk about Metro Last Light, the second game in the Metro trilogy, and specifically I'm going to ask... Is Metro Last Light still worth playing? Before we begin though, I must admit that I was never actually able to figure out why they called it Last Light. I think the Japanese title is actually more appropriate, which according to Google translates as Return, Return of the, the Psychic, psychic chimps, chimps from Outer space. space. The Psychic Space Chimps are, of course, those dark ones whose lair Artyom nukes in the first game, Metro 2033. So yeah, Artyom's back from Metro 2033 and the events of Last Light unfold as a direct sequel to that game. Khan the Mystic also returns and we begin our story with Khan's report of a surviving Dark One that he's spotted on one of his spiritual wanderings. A couple of days ago, I was near the ruins of the Dark One's hive and I saw one of them still alive. None too pleased with Khan's report, Miller, the uptight and overbearing command leader, immediately orders Artyom on a search and destroy mission to finish off the lone straggler Khan has discovered, thereby putting the Dark Ones to rest once and for all. Go with Khan to the gardens and locate the Dark One. I'll send a sniper along. My best. Anna! Yes, sir. Command of the SND is assigned to Artyom's future girlfriend, Anna the Sniper. Don't tell me you believe that bullshit about making peace with the Dark Ones. And the plan is for Artyom to crawl into the bushes and flush out the alien so Anna can snipe him off from a distance. Of course, things don't go quite as planned. Artyom and Anna get separated, and then the Nazis of all people show up to capture Artyom and the alien. And so begins Artyom's journey of skin of the teeth escapes, daring stealth, treacherous allies, and political intrigue as he navigates the subterranean labyrinth of the mutant-infested post-apocalyptic Moscow Metro in a heroic effort to complete his mission and kill a defenseless child. Yeah, that's right, the surviving Dark One is actually an endearing little alien boy. Don't worry though, Artyom doesn't actually try to kill this cute little guy. Contrary to Miller, Khan for one thinks humans need to befriend the alien. The bombing of the Dark Ones may have been humanity's worst mistake. And we also get flashback cutscenes throughout the campaign, revealing the special connection Artyom happened to forge with the Dark Ones during his childhood. In fact, Artyom and the alien end up fast friends for the final third or so of the story. Look, I'm like you, with clothes. And the alien even serves as a kind of Chekhov's gun in the dramatic finale, about which I won't say anything more here for fear of spoiling the whole thing. In terms of gameplay, Last Light is a stealth-heavy, resource-scarce FPS with customizable weapons and other handy gadgets, perhaps most noteworthy of which are the gas masks and filters you'll need to equip to survive on the surface. Surface, put your mask on. Compared to what I remember from 2033, Last Light is especially well populated. Artyom typically finds himself crammed in with the game's numerous hostiles and cramped, poorly lit underground spaces, and so stealth can get pretty tense at times. Fortunately though, enemies don't seem all that perceptive, and so as the player, you're given a lot of leeway with how close you can get to people before they suspect something's awry. Which is only fair given that Artyom's got no sixth sense powers. He can't see through walls or tag enemies with binoculars or anything like that, and so it's just you and them on a more or less equal playing field in terms of perception. Artyom does, however, have the element of surprise, which is a subtle but defining feature of Last Light's gameplay. Whenever Artyom enters a room of enemies, they're sluggishly trudging through their daily grinds, traipsing around on patrol, troubleshooting electrical equipment, or engaged in some variety of tiresome small talk to pass the time. I told you, man, you shouldn't have sent that crab-handed guy. What the so it's pretty simple to just sneak around them, which I consider to be the game's wry commentary on the nature of the daily work routine. You know, we can get so numbed and stunted mentally by the sheer repetition our work tasks demand that we're unlikely to notice, oh, say a deadly, heavily armed and highly skilled assassin in our midst. Ironically, even the mutants are stuck in ruts of their own. They're just more direct about it. Instead of doing manual labor, for example, the mutants snack on carry-on, and instead of engaging in small talk, they just grunt and groan at each other. 
Anyway, unlike my admittedly rather clumsy playthrough of the prequel Metro 2033, I never once ran out of ammo in Last Light. Never even came close, really. I guess somewhere along the way, I figured out a thing or two about how to play these games. So whenever I did make a mistake and tip off a guard to my presence, I could fend him and his comrades off without too much difficulty. Because the combat's not all that tough, to be honest. As long as you got some decent sights on your weapons, you can just sneak into a dark corner to fire on your targets. And once they realize where you are, just sneak to a new dark corner and repeat. You get regenerating health, so you're fine as long as you're well stocked on ammo and you don't try to rush the gunfights. You got different kinds of guns to choose from. Pistols, SMGs, assault rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles, crossbows, and so on. Any three of which you can carry at one time. Rangers usually carry up to three weapons at home choice of those is completely up to you. And you can equip your guns of choice with various sights, barrels, suppressors, and other attachments. The game gives you plenty of opportunity to upgrade your weapons at the shops you encounter between levels, but I found myself sticking with the same basic loadout, an SMG for general combat encounters, a shotgun for a little one-on-one -on -one with the mutants, and a sniper rifle for just in case. There are actually a couple of parts where the sniper rifle really comes in handy, by the way. You also get throwing knives, grenades, fire grenades, and claymore mines as secondary weapons. The throwing knives are great because they allow you to perform silent stealth kills from a distance, and then you can retrieve them from the victim's corpse. So if you're good with the knives, you don't need to worry about equipping a suppressor or finding the crossbow. Grenades are good both for inflicting damage on a heavily armored enemy and for tossing into a small room crowded with normal enemies. Fire grenades are good for dealing with packs of mutant wolves called Nosalis in the game, and the claymore mines are there for you to just be creative with. You know, follow your muse. Even if you alert the enemy to your presence though, a lot of times you can just pull out the compass which will tell you where to go to sneak to the exit. If you can get through one of those big iron doors without anyone noticing, they won't follow you so you just keep moving without getting into a fight. In other words, if you play this game in a stealthy way, you won't have to worry too much about scavenging ammo. What you will have to worry about scavenging though are the filters for your gas mask. The premise is Moscow was destroyed in the nuclear war and so that's why human society is migrated underground. But radiation levels are still dangerous high on the surface and so whenever the game leads you above ground you gotta don your cumbersome gas mask in order to breathe. <sighs> but the gas mask needs consumable filters to function properly, and you've gotta be constantly on the lookout for replacement filters if you want to avoid suffocating the next time you're in for a stroll around town. So this means you're basically forced to play the gas mask parts on a timer. Yes, you get some control over how many minutes you get. The more time you invest in scrounging around and rifling through abandoned rooms and closets and whatnot, the more likely you are to come across a misplaced or forgotten stash of filters. Fine, but on the other hand, you might also encounter scenarios like I did, where you're about to run out of your last filter and you gotta dash around in a panic to secluded parts of the map, desperately hoping to come across a replacement before you die horrifically of asphyxiation. <gasps> The first time I ran into trouble with the filters was in the Regina level about a third of the way through the campaign, where you gotta slowly push that train car along the tracks while firing backwards at the attacking Nasalis along the way. After a couple of anticlimactic deaths by suffocation, I wound up having to replay the whole level and really go through all those little side rooms to scrounge enough filters to get me through this one. Sure enough, there's plenty of filters to be found as long as you take the time to rummage through all those side rooms, but it's never fun to have to go back and replay a chapter from the beginning, you know? The other irony of the filters is that they force you to move through the above ground sections a little too briskly for a game that otherwise encourages slow, cautious, and methodical exploration and gameplay. You just wind up wanting to spend more more time above ground and less time underground. But on the other hand, if what the devs were going for with the gas mask mechanic was to ratchet up the tension, they certainly succeeded. But I don't want to sound like the filters ruined my experience with this game. Quite the contrary, it's actually a worthy playthrough and 90 to 95% of the time it had me hooked. The stealth is tense and engaging, the combat is solid and well-rounded, the characters and story are satisfyingly plausible and detailed, and so overall it's definitely worth a shot. Yeah! <laughs>
<laughs> Last Light originally came out in 2013, but I played the graphically updated Redux version from the 2014 compilation Metro Redux for the PS4. Anyway, you can pick this one up for cheap nowadays for PC and any number of consoles. It's even available on the Switch in fabulous 720p. So I say grab it and give it a shot. If you get the chance, you won't regret it. Except, of course, for that 5 to 10% that'll have you pulling your hair out, which I discuss in another video to keep this one spoiler free. So be sure to check out that other video if you've already played Last Light and you want to see if we ran across any of the same problems. Anyway, once again, my name's BuzzM1 and this was just some of my experience with Metro Last Light. If you found this video interesting or useful, would you kindly hit the like button? Also, if you want to see other gaming related content, review videos and hints and tips videos and whatnot, have a look at my channel page. Just click on the icon of that enthusiastic looking dog below this video and he'll lead you there. And if you like some of the other stuff you see on the channel page, consider subscribing. I would appreciate it. Anyway, until next time, thanks so much for watching.